topic, we will be talking about polygyny and Islam. Polygyny, polygyny, polygyny. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like, it's really taboo and it's a really controversial subject. And I think it's just because a lot of the misconceptions that are out there. And inshallah, in this video, we are going to try to clear some of those things up and maybe help, you know, more people have a, you know, a better understanding of it. A little disclaimer, we are not scholars or anything like that. This is called our Muslima perspective. So this so. is how we feel about it. You know what I mean? And inshallah you get with it and, and some of y'all, some of y'all not gonna get with it. But you know, for those of us who are with us and for those of you who are gonna feel us, inshallah you will, you know, take something away from this video and for the non Muslims watching, uh, inshallah, God willing, you'll have a better understanding of just what polygyny is in Islam. So, polygamy is when a husband can have more than one wife and when a wife can have more than one husband. However, when it's practiced in the bond, it's polygyny, which is when the husband is allowed to have up to four wives. That is the limit. Four wives and then you are done. So you can't have five and ten and fifteen and a hundred and all those crazy numbers. Even me, before I took my shahada, you know, that's the first thing. The first two things that stuck out to me when I first took my shahada was women have to cover and a man can have more than one wife. It's unfair, but you can't look at it like it's unfair. If you look at it like it's unfair, then you can say that it's unfair that a man has to work and provide and take care of everything on his own. And if the woman does work, all of that is her money. You know, and she can do what she wants with that. If she wants to go buy clothes and go on fabulous shopping trees or whatever, whatever she wants to do with it, it's her money and it's for her to decide. And a lot of people, particularly in this society, do not agree with that. They say when you're married, it's have these and y'all go in on it and so a lot of people will say that's not fair so it's not about you know what's fair and what's not it's about what has been put in place and what has been decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make everything easier for so us. So basically you don't want to start off your marriage with like negative connotations like okay this is, I will get a divorce if you do this or I will do get a divorce if you do that. Like Nadira said it is one of his rights and it's like Allah tells you that it's okay for a reason. You wouldn't say to your husband at the beginning of the marriage, you know, you can't, you know, pray or you can't, you know, read the Quran or, you know, you can't fast during the month of Ramadan. I mean, these are things that are actually in the Quran. It specifically says that they are okay for a reason. Now, even though you may not understand it at that moment, it's not something that you should put in your contact. For. Okay, so also you must know that if let's say that a sister was barren and she could not have any children, what would be the scenario if the husband actually wants to have children? I mean, does he just divorce that wife just so that he can get another wife who can have children, or would it be best that he takes another wife while keeping the second one and taking care of her, but still able to have the children that he wants? That actually has to be put in perspective too, too because that happens a lot. And personally, I would want to fulfill that for my husband, but if I was unable to do so, I would definitely want for him to be happy still. So that can be taken into consideration also. <laughs> Alright, so basically what we're saying is, in your contract, you don't want to put all these disclaimers and try to set it up so that you're basically taking away, you know, what is allowed and what is permissible. And you also don't want to put things in there that are setting you up for failure or even, you know, going in that direction of if you do that, if you, if you, brother, if you do what Allah has prescribed for you, that's it, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't want to do it like that. Which goes back to, you know, you definitely want to know where both of your heads are at before you even get married in the first place. Like, um, you know, you want to ask these questions. Um, see if that's something that he eventually wants to From a woman's perspective, if you can, you know, try to, find a couple who, you know, is currently practicing polygyny and talk to the sisters who are involved in that marriage and talk about, you know, a lot of different subjects, you know, because we, we are women. We are still women, so we're going to have feelings about it and, and different things can arise, especially when children come into the picture, you know, just how to go about finding one, how to go about adjusting to having another wife in your family, so study it, be a be open to it. Just be open to it. I'm not saying run out and just you wrong if you don't want to practice it. It's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying be open to it and at least open to the idea of actually learning about it because I know from a, a non-Muslim perspective and particularly in the society, you know what I mean, it's all about getting married and having that 
one wife. The women the actually living in the same house. Now that is something that the women do have a say on. You do not have to live in the same house as your co-wives. Um, that is his responsibility to take care of you guys in a way in which you feel comfortable. Personally, there's no way I see myself ever with, that, with another woman <laughs> who is also married to my husband. I mean, that's just not going to work. But it's going to be hard enough for me to live with my husband. Let right. Alone. You know, we got you know, three more other girls in there that and all have the itty bitty babies and everything. But that's, <laughs> that's for you to decide, like she said. But I, a lot of people have more, a good patience, and, you know, me, me and her, we don't, we don't have any patience. But, um,. <laughs> But yeah, so that's, that's one of your rights. Um, also, but you know, you don't really have a say in if your husband wants to get another wife, which is why it's important to speak about this beforehand.